Well, today we're focusing on the energy sector. Of course, you do know that uh, different various committees were actually set up uh, by the government in the wake of that few subsidy protests. The House weighs in, and then uh, Labour also talking about it, and so many things happening. But uh, Madam Nuhu Ribadu's committee, which he headed, uh, eventually have submitted the report to the federal government as reported. But we understand their reports now saying that uh, the report has actually leaked to the press. Well, a different kettle of fish entirely. So we'll focus on that report, which was set up about revenue. And we're joined now by Bodeshomi, who is uh, an energy analyst and publisher of Energy Today. Thank you for coming on this morning. Oh, thank you. And good morning. Well, so many things uh, about this sector. I mean, the disagreements about the budget largely based on this sector. Uh, protests can easily just be triggered off if one thing goes wrong in this sector. But this report... Uh, on revenue. It just talks about so much sleaze going on, mismanagement of funds going on in this sector. But when you went through it, the little that we were able to see, were you surprised by anything you saw? Well, not surprised, not in the least. I think um, the issue here will be the fact that certain things which the general public are not aware of is coming into um, the public domain, but it's coming at a rate that is causing some kind of alarm. I think the first thing is that we need to understand the system with which the energy sector operates in. The energy sector is a sector that is interlinked with the international energy environment. And the nature of the energy environment has it such that you have major players who interplay across nations and across borders. And Nigeria is not an exemption. And these people who we will call the major players have a way of dovetailing into certain sectors. One of the things that is the responsibility of the government and of the private sector is to see that there is constructive engagement of these players rather than fighting them. One of the, one of the things that we need to see is where we have in common with the people who have the capacity to sabotage the system is that we all want the industry to grow. We all want the industry to be profitable to everybody. So it is the responsibility of stakeholders to see that there's an inclusive discussion and an inclusive engagement of all these people to ensure that everybody works towards the same goal. I'll give a simple example. We have a lot of illegal refineries all over the country. Um, the other day, a diplomat from one of the OPEC countries said that, what is, asked me what the government was doing about it. Obviously, because I'm not in the center of the government, I don't know. But from the feelers, I have certain ideas. But one thing that can be looked into is the fact that refineries are refineries. Nigeria needs more refineries. Refineries are on different scales. You have modular refineries, which can come under small-scale refineries. You have medium-scale refineries, and you have large-scale refineries. The government can look at a way of including these people into a system and ensure that they provide the research and development network for them. They, they, they give them the adequate support and then integrate them into legal refineries. That way, they don't have to spend money fighting them. Because in the end, we need refineries, we need more people who refine things. Let us look at ways of engaging these people. And the same thing applies to the people who, uh, who are seen to be sabotaging the system in this case. One of the things that is genuinely lacking is the fact that there isn't sufficient intelligent discourse on the activities of the energy industry. You think it's deliberate or inadvertent? I think there are multiple factors. There may be some amount of deliberate efforts from the players to make it mystical, but there is also the responsibility of everybody from the media, from civil society organizations to actually probe. Fortunately, we have the Freedom of Information Bill. But guess what? Nobody's putting the bill to work. Nobody has sent a mail or a letter to the CBN, to the NCC, asking them for the parameters with which they have arrived at $75 for the barrel. I mean, for barrel for which they use for the budget. The same thing to the senators. The senators are saying it, is, it should be $80. On what basis are they coming up with those figures? We don't just want to hear highfalutin words in the marketplace, people that are toying with the minds and they're thinking of Nigerians. We want to hear statements that are based on facts and let them leave it to the let them leave it to Nigerians to judge who is saying what. Okay. It's not just enough to just say that this is right. The, the foundation of the industry, the oil industry in Nigeria, yes. is likely to be shaken if what you're talking about begins to come into play. That's what some of these people will be saying. I, I don't think that will shake the foundation. I think 
that will include local players into the system. And whether we like it or not, for there to be progress, for there to be stability, we need more Nigerians being stakeholders in the system. Whether, I mean, the, the only successful country with the local content law is Norway. And one of the things that Norway has done is that in their area of local content, they're not even looking at um, them shortlisting Norwegian companies per se, although that is a key aspect. But they are looking at ways that the oil majors are including Norwegian, com Norwegian companies in research and development. At the end of the day, we are in a knowledge society. It is knowledge that makes the difference. And in these days, knowledge is a factor of production. We are having a local content law that is pushing for Nigerian contractors to be major contractors, to have some aspect. Yes, they get the contract, but they cannot execute. They don't have the technical competence. By the time they get aware of certain competencies, technology has moved. In the IT world, it is said that 130 days is an internet year. In other words, what happens within 130 days in the IT world makes a year. So we need people, we need societies, we need systems that will ensure that we are at play. And part of, those, part of getting that system to function falls on the responsibility of government. But it is not just government as an entity. It is all the stakeholders, in which case we have civil society needs to probe, we have the media needs to ask questions, we have the general public needs to discuss intelligently. Look at the discussions in the power sector. Everybody is just talking about it is my right, it is not my right, I qualified, I didn't qualify. We need to hear a few more things that are technical, that are intelligent, that shows that these people actually qualify or don't qualify. Somebody needs to talk about their track record, their history. Somebody needs to talk about the people you who are there. All that is not being said by the bodies. Uh, not sufficiently. You know I mean, we read, the, we read the papers. Look at what are in the papers. It's just that right. these people yeah. cannot work in our environment. Let, we need a little more than that. Let's take mm. a look at the report. I mean, you have said that nothing surprised you. But <laughs> I'm sure one element must have been something that you did not know before now. Everything in the report, you, I mean, that you've seen from the excerpts, you did know before now? Well, first of all, I didn't write the report, so it would be wrong for me to say that I knew what was in the report. What I simply said is that I was not surprised with the main trust, or let me say what I meant is that I was not surprised with the main direction or trust or with which the, the report came out. And I don't think anybody should really be. Do you mind if I ask, what's the main trust, <laughs> in your opinion? Well, the main trust is that we are certain people who, I wouldn't like to call them mafia, who you call like an establishment or established people who for one reason or the other are shortchanging Nigerians. And I don't think that's news. I don't think that's news. So I, I, in other words, it's something that has been out there, but we just needed to formally document it. Well, if, if, you, common, if you put it... It's, it's, so you know, it's something <laughs> of common knowledge, yeah. and everybody knows about it, yes. uh -huh. but it doesn't exist in formal circles. So they will deny it every time. Okay, we can put it that way. But I want to believe that there will be some kind of report that has included these things over the years, so many. I mean, there's the UN report that talked about the oil spillage. I'm sure there will be factors there. If um, somebody is going up to there, it's really petroleum law, you'll probably hear some things. If you carry books, I mean, there, there are so many things to say about people who have capacity to influence governments, to influence boards of multinational companies, to, ex to execute... Um, I mean, to influence changes in government. There are, there are uh, companies and um, establishments that have that capacity.